Lemon Amiga present. A play side video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Lemon Amiga play guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Entity, produced and developed by Lariciel and released in 1993. Milgram the Wise watches on as the most terrible monster in the universe, which has been locked away in impenetrable stone, breaks free of its prison on. Zeros Albedo, and the most terrible monster of them all is named Entity, and really that thing can wreak havoc on civilization itself. So, unfortunately, in that battle, Milgram the Wise was killed, and all he could do was send his trusty scepter along to the neighboring planet, where fortunately his daughter Anthemis happened to be walking along and she saw that crash landing through the atmosphere. Spirit then gives his daughter the magic ability to take on Entity in the family tradition and in order to take on that Entity she's given magical powers including a protection suit and also hands which can deliver lethal blow. To defeat the entity, we need five gems which are hiding behind five end of world bosses, and we'll have to also collect three pieces of a scepter whilst we're in those worlds. And the only clue that we have is that we can pick up these scrolls which tell us the scepter is in a particular item, or a particular animal in this case, because all these attackers are based on prehistory, you'll find the usual assortment of dinosaurs and little things which will buzz around yes you can hit those with a good target and little pterodactyls and things like that and those animals will get bigger as the game goes on and you'll fight large animals in this game but not at this point you can see by collecting those energy crystals that will uncover a place where we can jump all the way to collect some more bonus items and the first part of our scepter and that's the easy part, farmed already, all we have to do is to find those and of course defend yourself against all these critters. All of these things will require more than one hit, so we can't expect to go in there all guns blazing, and you can see we've managed to upgrade our simple first weapon up to double fire, but by collecting this symbol we can collect more energy and that restores our health all the way back up, which is great, it's um, what we need when we're fighting these large bosses, and you may remember we picked up the scroll and that told us that inside one of these snake heads whatever they may be, certainly not inside a crocodile, we'll find another part of that scepter. The hardest part is to keep on target, there we go, that's the second part completed, and these little beasts down on the floor, sometimes it's very difficult to aim down, sometimes you have to run at those and they'll simply back away, but 
practice makes perfect. Sometimes if you persist, then concentrated fire will get rid of them. You can see already these backgrounds are absolutely terrific. You can see trees and mountains in the far distance. And that gives us a great depth perception and illusion. Unfortunately, no parallax scrolling, but we do have some copper effects in the sky. And if I climb up here, well, hopefully, if I climb up there, that will take me to a teleport. These mysterious platforms will disappear as soon as we jump off those. And if we are attacked, well, that won't deplete our damage too much. It's best to stay on the move. And luckily, these small tokens will give us some extra score and some extra health as well sometimes. You can see that one on the floor, which looks like an egg, which is being protected by these things. Those will give us extra energy. And if we collect this little item, it will hopefully land us onto an extra life. And you have to land exactly on the right spot. Unfortunately not. I have managed to collect that extra life before now. So we just have one more piece of the puzzle to find. And well, let's check out that scroll. Unfortunately, that is reminding us one of those pieces of the puzzle is on top of one of those platforms and we found that already at the beginning of this level. So perhaps those scrolls are a little mixed up, but we will find an extra scroll later on. And for now, let's just check out these holes. Unfortunately, we can't climb down into those caves, but creatures will emerge from those and you have to take them on. And sometimes we can find extra bonuses like yet another one of these butterflies which helps us to fly and if we flew the other way then we'd find an orb which gives us invulnerability but i happen to know that there is another orb right here you can see our energy is falling the more that we run of course we will deplete energy simply running in this game and unfortunately we were right at the door of a full energy recharge so here it is and unfortunately we run out of energy Sometimes when those platforms disappear, then they've disappeared for good. And if you don't make those leaps on time, then you've missed that chance to get whatever it was. But we found another scroll and we find that the third part of the scepter is inside a pterodactyl somewhere. A large beast waiting for us. So let's collect the energy that we should have made in the first place and block off that cave, which should have helped us climb those platforms and move on to the next section of the game, which features a swamp. And yes, we can alter our trajectory so that we can land pixel perfectly on those swamp blocks and avoid the snappers of the crocodile. We don't really have to bother about any of this wildlife. And the great tip about this game is to avoid all that by simply running away. And that saves us energy on this first level enough to tackle the end of level boss. This game was designed and all these amazing graphics were created by Noel Billy who created Night Force in 1989 on the Amiga and moved on to Worms Armageddon in 1999. The code was created by David Fernandez and he's most known for football manager games from Portugal and he also created Wild Streets in 1989 and Star Rush in 1991. Lastly, the music was created by Christoph Zeflu, who also created the music for Baby Joe in Going Home in 1991. There are five worlds, and I'll be showing you the first two in this playthrough, but I've only actually managed to complete the first one because this is quite a tricky game, and if you collide with enemies, your engine can be robbed very quickly. And if you don't know where those pickups are, then you'll certainly be struggling. So these two aren't actually the ones which hold the scepter, but that seems to be both of those out of the way. No, the ones which hold the scepter in this case are this way. And if you activate the bottom one of these, yes, these are mini puzzles. But if we ride on this platform and we take a running jump when the next one suddenly appears, then we can gain access to the final pterodactyl, which holds the final piece of that scepter. After we 
jump up and collect that, we can now move on towards the end of that level, where we'll find a warp gate onto the next world. On this world, I think the sound effects are above terrific. I think the background sounds are amazing. And the tick-tock of the clock in the background, well, we haven't got a time limit, but we certainly have an energy limit which unfortunately is not restored when we face the first of our world bosses and suitably for the prehistoric world the world boss is a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex now these are not AGA graphics this is on a stock Amiga 500 and when I first saw this it blew my mind I didn't actually have this game back in the day I think 90% of the reviews I actually had on the original and 10% of those I had on copy but this game I actually never heard of back in the day but I did remember seeing the monster on adverts and things like that but unfortunately I didn't buy it and there are a number of reasons why not one I didn't actually see it out there and the second reason is well this game is very difficult and it's not really a joy to play you can see hammering away there with this weedy weapon trying to pick a leg on that t-rex like a chicken leg is not actually working and it's best to treat that thing from a distance and get rid of that the easy way but you can see these guys really do make a meal of the action because these power-ups are quite limited To the second level of the five in this game this is the mountain world and you can see the mountain world has terrific background graphics yet again and those remind me of games such as star ray which had an effort of a background in there but this game has also terrific sound effects and even the music on this level we get rid of that tick tock it's a clock and we have instead a circus kind of atmosphere which is great because some of these animals are quite crazy and let's not forget our scantily clad female is blasting away with her single shot weapon here apparently two of those little dragons you can see floating around harbor a piece of our magic scepter that we need we definitely need that magic scepter otherwise if we get to the end of the level without it unfortunately we can't get through so well I have never found those pieces on this level it's pretty difficult to even hit things and as most things require more than one shot this firepower really isn't going to hit that spot and we do find better weapons later on I remember watching the long play of this recently and finding that there is an amazing lightning bolt weapon which will kill things amazingly but for now let's persevere with the double shoot and kill something that looks like a giant squid on land the way this girl climbs up and down ladders is rather attractive as well added to her paraphernalia and that magic costume which means she can run fast and jump high and fire explosive missiles out of her gloves and well sometimes g-strings can do that general I think the graphics of this game are certainly pleasing to the eye I think the detail on offer is certainly friendly to every kind of platformer and it was unusual to have a maiden playing the hero in those days but today well sometimes after Lara Croft we find games with female hosts but usually these kinds of shooters are obviously the male domain but I can't find any male who wouldn't want to play as a female character like this and females like to play as females as well so to my mind having a female central character is actually a win-win but this game is certainly not when it comes to this firepower I think the enemies are okay certainly not hard to avoid those but not easy to hit those either and I think the music on offer and the sound effects are great and adds that otherworldly atmosphere to this game and perhaps an audience is watching this in a theater as you saw in the opening credits this may actually be a movie and warrior princesses in movies well this was probably before 
Dr. Xena, the Warrior Princess, even emerged. That began in 1995, and well, maybe they took certain cues from this game. I think the entity alien involved is a very memorable character, and I can't help feeling that I have seen that character before. And yes, even if you want to continue, you can do. But I think in general, I feel that this game lacks some kind of substance. The jumping on offer is reasonable, but it does require patience to master the jumping. And even though we are not bombarded by enemies, they are difficult to hit. And collecting a few scepters, which are in the same places every time that you approach their level, they are not that random. It means that this game is somehow lacking in the fun department. But you can see extra screenshots that I found on Lemon Amiga of the rest of the levels. This is level 3. This is actually World 3, which looks like an underwater world, which is quite novel. So you can see the graphics on offer certainly pushed the original Amiga to its limits. And this game only required half a meg of memory. But as I say, somehow, in some way, this really lacks addictability value. And somehow, in some way, this game only really is of merit because of these great graphics. Yes, these graphics and even sometimes this music is incredible. And there are a range of bosses in this game. There are lots of alien types, including a massive spider at the end of level 3, and at the end of level 4 we find another alien that looks oddly reminiscent, I don't know why, and the final boss is obviously the entity itself. Finally, the scores, the one gave this 52%, Lemon Amiga score is currently 54%, Amiga Force gave it 57, Amiga Format gave Entity 58, Amiga Joker gave it 64%, and the highest score was Amiga Power, who gave this 74%, comparing it to Shadow of the Beast. Hope you enjoyed this trip back in time with Entity, and will remain in the past for our next review sometime soon. Thank you.